Hello, welcome to NAFDAQ and your else. My name is Tosin Omolaja. This is the program that brings you all the important information you need to know about NAFDAQ, the agency saddled with the responsibility of safeguarding our health by ensuring that the foods, drugs, cosmetics and medical equipment made available to us are safe and wholesome. Training, staff development and welfare, both physical and emotional, are essential elements of any organization's growth and sustainability capsules. This is why under the leadership of Professor Mujisola Adeyeye, these critical elements have been given utmost priority and the effects are undeniable. NAFDAQ has become more effective and efficient. There were things that we never knew we could do as an agency that we grew up quickly to do. That is what is called the business continuity training, which we went through under quality management system. Meaning, you're supposed to do this in three months, and now you have to do it in one month. Or you're supposed to do it to 1,000 people, now you have 100 people. What do you do? That doesn't mean you kill yourself, but it's that you reprogram and prioritize. Uh, but in terms of training, uh, what we started doing in March 2018 or April 2018 became more understandable to staff. Because April 2018, we started using Zoom. In 2019, I think we had about a little over 1,000 trainings. In 2020, we had over 4,000 trainings. Because this training is extremely important for our staff, uh, we just put a lot of premium on training. On the program today, we joined the Director General of NAFDAQ and other directors at the agency's management retreat designed to review, refocus, and keep the agency firmly on the path of growth and excellence it has been set on since Professor Adeyeye took over helms of the agency. Honorable director, <laughs> but I mean it, uh, you are honored and uh, appreciated throughout my tenure as a DG, NAFDAQ, I've made it a priority to strengthen our regulatory processes and bonds with all stakeholders. And we're still in the process of doing that. It's a continuous process. That's part of quality management system. I personally attach great importance to this retreat as it is a valuable opportunity to openly and frankly discuss issues that concerns us all. all of, and of course, we are deepening our partnership in very practical ways throughout the country and around the world. I strongly believe that no organization can solve today's global challenges alone. It takes all of us working together I've set uh, three goals for this retreat. First, to review the agency's 2018 to 2023 strategic plan. Secondly, to listen to a presentation on stress management and emotional intelligence. And thirdly, to exchange views on pressing concerns affecting our work. The program is de deliberately designed to allow us some free time to put into practice stress management, meaning free time to relax, exercise, and restore. Thank you all, and have a pleasant stay. God bless. Retreats are actually necessary to um, kind of um, withdraw from your daily routine and assess you know what you've been doing over some time and also try to see what else you can do to improve your performance you know um, in, the, in, the, I mean, in the future so that is the essence of um, sitting down like this uh, the entire management and sitting with the director general to listen to you each of the directors you know one-on-one -on -one so that we can actually address each I mean the problems associated with um, whatever our functions are and to kind of jointly profile 
uh, solutions and look for the best way forward, you know, to address some of the uh, problems that um, uh, we might be having, you know. And also, we, um, we would also have the opportunity to look at uh, what we currently have and see where the, what, what gaps, you know, um, we have. The number one thing is for us to look at our strategic plan. Uh, the strategic plan is 2018-2023. So, 2020, we feel we need to look at the strategic plan and uh, do a kind of mid-term review. Where are we in the strategic plan in level of implementation? And uh, see the areas we are able to do well and the areas we need to improve so that we can come up with a reviewed strategic plan that will guide the agency's promotion, uh, programs from 2021 to 2023 when the strategic plan might have uh, expired. And this discussion or this meeting has afforded us the opportunity to look inside and harmonize a lot of things in terms of regulatory activities of the agency for the purpose of, you know, ensuring that only good quality drugs and drug products, food and food products actually reach Nigerians. Once you have a strategic plan, it's always important to review the plan. And of course, this is a mid-term mid review. And uh, it has helped us to look at what we have done in the past and what we want to do in the future and to make uh, the necessary adjustments. Uh, if there are things that uh, we need to add, if there are things we need to remove. So this uh, review of uh, our strategic plan in the agency it's uh, key and it's very, very important so that uh, we'll be able to key in our, our values, our core values, and uh, so many other things that are important in the agency. The retreat so far has uh, focused on the strategic plan. And if you look at strategic plan, the strategic plan and the annual budgets, they are positively related. The budget of the agency is one of the key functions of finance and accounts. You know, the, the point I'm trying to make is that uh, by the time the uh, strategic plan that is being reviewed is approved, it's indirectly telling finance and accounts that, uh, that we have to work well, we have to be on our toes, we should ensure that it's like a, the job that we have been doing. We have to do more. It's the strategic plan, and you know, we discussed it extensively yesterday and a little bit of adjustments were made here and there. And we also discussed a lot of achievements that have been made because, you know, the strategic plan is a 20, it's a five-year period plan from 2018 to 2023. And by the grace of God, God has really actually helped us to achieve a lot of um, itineraries that we had on the plan and we're able to tweak it here and there to further improve our activities. Any organization that doesn't have a vision is not really a very true and successful organization. So NAFDAQ has a vision. Where do we need to, where do we want to be? You know, and um, we need to look at ways that the vision that we have uh, in front of us we are achieving it. And when we achieve our vision, it will be to the betterment of even our clients. Because when we are doing well, our clients will do well. And uh, our vision really is to see how we can improve in our systems to make sure we continue to regulate our clients very well. Our stack stakeholders will really be of very, very important benefit when our vision is really achieved. So we need to look at such, and that's what we did today. And we'll also look at the core values. If NAFDAQ staff will imbibe the core values of the agency, of course, it will trickle down to all our stakeholders.
it will be to a very great benefit to the stakeholders that are uh, doing NAPDAG related activities. We'll take a short break right now. Please don't go away. Welcome back. If you are just joining in, you're watching NAFDAQ and your rails. The retreat wasn't all about strategic planning and reviews. Attendees were tutored on how to identify and strengthen their emotional intelligence for more productive interactions, both at work and in their personal lives. So in the past, we, we believed that IT was everything, intellectual capacity was everything. <laughs> So, you know, we call it cognitive intelligence. The ability to write, read very well, you know, the cram, first class. Mm. Well, things are changing, right? Yeah. Right. So what happened is this. Uh, you may not easily catch EQ, emotional intelligence on the CV, but the power of emotional intelligence is profound. It's so important. So this very important trait that is that seems to be more important than IQ. What is it about? The ability to understand your emotions, the way you feel, and the emotions of what? Other people. And then use that awareness, right? To manage your own behavior and the behavior of what? Other people. And then your relationships also. That's a bit longer, isn't it? But there are key words here. The ability, the skill, the capacity to understand yourself, how you feel at any given time. And then understand how Mrs. Mwanko feels. I understand how I feel, understand how she feels. And able to use that understanding, that awareness to manage my own behavior and then manage my relationship with her and with every other person. And that's emotional intelligence. For somebody to be a leader, you have to know how to bring people to follow you. And many times it takes emotional intelligence. All of us are differently made. Even the same you know, children of the same mother, we are differently made in terms of our emotional dis you know, display and intellectual capacity and whatnot. And as a leader, you have to be able to know that the people working with you have different tendencies. And for people working with you to know you have different tendencies. That way, you will, is, is, you will f actually figure out what are the strengths of each of the small group that you have, or big group, and you capitalize on the strength and sharpen the weak points. It's, you, will, you cannot discard a staff because that staff is weak in this area. No, look, at, look for what that staff can do very well and encourage the staff to do it. But it's also, it's a, leadership is by example. You cannot be sloughing around, not coming to work on time, and think that your followers will, fall, will, will, will come, on, come, you know, come to work on time. So leadership is also by example. So it is extremely important, and that is part of what our staff have been going through, especially as we see one set succeeding the, uh, succeeding the other, uh, to be sure that we don't have gaps when uh, a set of staff retire, things like that, you know. The retreat has been very uh, wonderful and uh, we've learned so much. Uh, all we need to do is to go back, uh, cascade this uh, training uh, for the rank and file, uh, because it's not just for us. And uh, what we have also learned here is basically about the issue of also a kind of grooming the uh, successors as directors, uh, the day is coming where we're going to bow out. Some of us are leaving, and there's need to hand over the baton uh, to the younger generation who are coming behind us. Uh, so to a large extent, even though the major teams of this, uh, the two major teams of this uh, retreat is about stress management and emotional intelligence, but it's all encompassing. 
is all encompassing, very deep, penetrating, incisive, and very instructive. Participants also learned a number of routines in managing stress and leading a healthier life. From what we have learned so far in various um, stress, ma stress management um, lectures that we have attended and this current one, it's just to help us, they, they, they keep opening our eyes on the way we are supposed to manage our jobs properly, where it's necessary, where you have to delegate. And then when you're delegating, it is always important to supervise because if you don't supervise on time, by the time your subordinate makes an error, it puts on more, more stress on you. So those are the various ways that this kind of training has actually helped us. I, I expect that at the end of this retreat, I will be emotionally more balanced than before. And uh, the topics that we have before us, emotional intelligence and uh, stress management, I believe is going to go a long way in making me a better leader. I'll be able to handle challenges that will possibly arise in the course of the work, to handle people under me as a director. I'm the director of the North Central Zoom with many staff under my control. I believe that I'm going to be better off. Also, in terms of stress management, I know that after this retreat, I'll be able to know how to manage stress in order for me to have a better output in my work. I can tell you that what I learned today it's actually um, you know, going to help me going further in my day-to-day -day activities, especially when it comes to area of positivity, you know, because it's actually very, very important, you know, when you have a positive outlook to, to life, to work, even how to relate with your staff, you know, and also how to ha handle different situations because situations arise but the outcome is how do you handle the situation how do you react like we learned today initially when we thought we had this retreat and they said we are going to do re strategic planning review i said hey god this is going to be another work. But when I came in and I saw the program, the way it was structured, all everything ends by 2.30. Yesterday, I had time to go to the gym. I walked out for 45 minutes before I, go, I, I went back to the room and then had a good rest. So, and like today now, we're already done for the day. So I'll still have time to go to the gym. So it, it, it's really good away from the normal stress of office, stress of home. Even the traffic, for those of us that live in Lagos, just relaxing in a hotel. So to me, it's also like a mini holiday, and I really appreciate the management for putting this thing together. Professor Adeye rounded up the retreats by encouraging the team to consider the learnings as a lifetime one that would positively impact their professional and personal lives. Got from uh, his presentation is uh, the fact that for IQ, you are born with it. For emotional intelligence, many of us, most of us are not born with it. And which means we have enough room, we have time to become better uh, in terms of emotional intelligence. I give an example, it's a personal example and uh, of course, it, I mean, the good thing is it's a long, it's a lifelong learning. Until we all go down six feet, we will continue to learn. So don't be too hard on yourself. If you find yourself uh, a little bit deficient in one area, uh, God is has not finished with us. We are all projects in His hand. But I want to give an, an example. Uh, by nature, I'm not very patient, uh, but somehow life experience put me in a situation where I have to learn ABC of being patient. And it's not like I finished it in one day or one year or one decade. It is a lifelong experience. Uh, but the One big thing that I've learned is to put myself in another person's shoes. Uh, and this uh, benefit of the doubt, empathy, uh, mentoring, 
all will flow into that perspective. And uh, as directors, leaders of NAVDA, I just want to encourage all of us that first, God has not finished with us. I, I love life because I see an example, an opportunity to learn something, you know, one day, one year, whatever. Uh, so that those coming after us, we can hand over something to them, no matter how small. Uh, I see a, a human being beyond the five feet, six feet, or whatever. I see the future in, in a human being. And I'd like people to see that in me, too, that God has not finished with me. Uh, and uh, to give each other a little bit of grace, what I would call grace, meaning uh, a latitude for them to be better uh, in whatever we think is taught as good. So I want to thank uh, everybody again, and uh, I believe we're going to pass it down in our divisions at home. <laughs> uh, it's, it's so practical. When you are dealing with husbands, wives, that is the best place to learn. Because we are so differently wired. But we, we come together in life as spouses, and then we have to learn, you know, and grow. So thank you so much. And thank you, directors, again. I cannot thank you enough. The Director of Planning and Research highlighted the agency's central expectations aftermath the retreat. I'm expecting a very, very uh, important progress for the agency because at the end of this strategic review meeting, we will be able to know our milestones and we will be able to improve on the areas we need to improve. Um, the outcome of this meeting will be widely circulated, especially among our staff, that all of the, all the staff will really need to sit up, those that need to sit up, and even those that are doing well, definitely there will be areas that they will improve upon. So I'm expecting a very positive result, a very um, high improvement in areas of the agency's performance vis-a-vis -vis staff outputs and everything. Here is where we draw the courtings on this edition of the program. Join us same time, same station next week for another informative package. In the meantime, if you have comments, complaints, or you want to report activities of fake drugs or adulterated food product peddlers, our doors are always open. You can reach NAFTA via toll-free numbers. For inquiries, call 0700-162-3322. For complaints, please call 0800-162-3322 or email nafta at nafta.gov.ng. COVID-19 is real. Please ensure you and your family follow safety measures as outlined by the NCDC. Stay away from crowded places as much as possible. And if you must be out there, please wear a face mask. Wash your hands regularly with soap and water and ensure you use only NAVDAC approved alcohol based hand sanitizers. Taking the NAVDAC approved COVID 19 vaccine is safe. It's our best bet of stamping out the deadly coronavirus. And don't forget to download the Med Safety app from iOS or Play Store to report any adverse reaction from the vaccine or any other medicine at all. See you next week. Stay safe.